I'm today, for today comes from Luke chapter 14, verses 16 through 24. Then he said unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all went with one accord. They began to make excuses. And all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them, and I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of the, those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Amen. I know we've all made excuses in life for different things, and we have all said something like this. If it were not for this particular thing, I would do that for you. Or if it was not for that thing, I would do it for you. And, or if it was not for all these other things in my life, I would make that commitment and do that, do that thing for you. We've all said that. Maybe in different words, but we've all said that and missed uh, an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody and to help somebody. Now in this story that we just read the scriptures in Luke chapter 14, this man had a great supper plan for all of his friends. Now, he did not just plan this on the spur of the moment. This was not something that just came up at uh, uh, about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He says, well, I think I'll just go around and get, get, gather up a bunch of my, my friends and we'll have a meal. Now, this was an announced planned meal. The invitations had been sent out. The preparations had been made. A, a large banquet hall was decorated. Plates and food were prepared for many people to come. And it was at supper time. This was not at breakfast. This was not at lunch time. But this was in the evening. <coughs> and so the, the, the kind, generous, rich man sent his servants out to let everybody know that the meal was ready, the entertainment was ready, the food was ready, and now it was time for them to come to this great feast, this great dinner. I have been invited to a lot of your homes to eat. I have, you have been invited to other people's homes to eat. And it is so wonderful to have that fellowship with one another Amen. when we have those opportunities. Yes. Amen. But when this kind, generous man, man sent his servants to go let everybody know that the meal was ready, they all, not part of them, they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. They all made excuses. Now, uh, I can understand, and you could probably understand, if you prepared a great dinner, or maybe you invited a bunch of guests to your wedding, or to your daughter's wedding, or to your son's wedding, and you rented a large banquet hall, and you sent out invitations ahead of time, and you uh, were, were very excited about this event, and then you all of a sudden about... And, and say your wedding uh, uh, time was going to be uh, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, all of a sudden about 3 or 4 o'clock, everybody starts calling you and says, I can't make it. I can't make it. I'm not going to be able to make it. 
uh, and they give you some type of excuse. This particular story it has been used by many pastors, and it's a great evangelistic message of how Jesus has uh, sent an invitation for people to come and be saved and come into the family of God. And many of them have made excuses why they cannot come. But I'm telling you, the message is also for you and me. The, the, there's a message in this story where you are one of those people and I am one of those people that have made an excuse why we can't do something. If it were not for this, I would do that, Lord, but I, but you know, I can't do it. If it were not for that person that hurt my feelings, I would have done that, Lord, but now they hurt my feelings, I'm not going to do it. Uh, if it were not for all the other things I've already committed to, Lord, I, I, would, I would do it, but, but, you know, Lord, I can't do it. This message is for you and me today. Yes. Amen. The Lord wants you to come to Him to have some great fellowship with Him. He's prepared a lot of things for you. Not just heaven. Heaven is a great place where we all have wonderful relatives and we have wonderful expectations of streets of gold and, and fellowship with the saints and all these wonderful things we have uh, that to look forward to, but, but the Lord is saying, I have prepared a lot of stuff for you here to, uh, to enjoy while you're on earth, but many of us make excuses. Now I want you to listen to the excuses that was made in this scripture reading today. One of the men said uh, to the servant to go back and tell the master, by the way, they, these guys didn't even have enough courage to go tell the master, they sent the servant back and, and uh, told this guy, I says, you know, I bought a piece of land, probably bought it about a week or two weeks earlier. They just didn't buy it that moment. And I haven't even looked at the land yet. And, uh, you know, I want to get over there before it gets dark tonight and look at it. Well, what about, what about that I'm sure the servant didn't record it in here, but I'm sure the servant probably said, well, can't you go tomorrow? Yeah. No, i got to go today. But it's almost dark. It's almost time for supper. Now I got I got to go and look at that land today because uh, uh, it's just important for me to do that. If it if it weren't for me having to go look at that land, I would come to the dinner. But I got to go look at the land. <coughs> now, how many of us would go buy a house or a piece of property that we haven't even looked at and go ahead and pay for it, and then decide at some other point that we were going to go look at it? Well, this servant was probably a little disappointed. So, but he goes to, to another one. He goes to another person that had received the invitation. And he goes to that person and says, look, the, the, the dinner is ready. Boy, I mean, we are going to have a wonderful time today. Uh, the master has invited all these uh, uh, great friends of yours and mine. And we are just going to have a great, great time. And that friend of the rich man that prepared this meal said, well, you know, uh, I bought some animals to help plow up my field, and i got to go over there and look at them uh, uh, and see if they'll do the job. And the servant looked at the man, I'm sure, and again, it's not in these scriptures, but I can imagine that the servant said something like, you bought some animals and you ain't even looked at them yet? Yeah, I bought them. I trust this guy over here, and, and he wouldn't sell me any bad animals, so I just bought all these animals, and I'm going to go use them. But i got to go look at them this afternoon. Uh, if it wasn't for that, if it wasn't for this, uh, if it wasn't for all the other things that, that are going on, I would come to the dinner, but I can't come. Yes. <laughs> By this time, the, uh, the servant is, is dragging. I mean, he is, he's, what am I going to tell my master? 